Let's start off yeah, real, sure really simple. Someone who wants to get their foot in the door. Someone who's thinking, you know, I've, I've been learning iOS as a side gig for a while. I've been out of the job entirely, evenings, weekends, practicing my Swift, reading, learning, watching, whatever it is. What's your advice for helping them get their first foot in the door, get their first entry-level role? That's a very good question. So whenever you're doing something new that you don't have any form of record of doing, right? Like when you've been an iOS developer for a while or if you've been a writer or a you know, lawyer or whatever profession it is for a while, then you have like a history of doing it, which is makes it easier to get a new job. So it's that kind of catch-22 situation of, you know, you want to get the experience and you need the experience to get a job, but how can you get the experience without getting the job first, right? So it's a, a kind of a, a tricky situation. So I think in this kind of situation, you really need to find other ways to kind of prove your skills, mm -hmm. uh, whether that is hobby projects that you've been building yourself, whether it's uh, courses you've been taking, uh, whether it's uh, things you might have done with your friends or something like this, or just like general interest in your field. Uh, but I think it's very important to like emphasize that that thing that you're trying to do in the beginning, like getting your very first job in whatever kind of field it is, it's always going to be the most difficult. And it's the same thing when you're moving. Like for example, you know, if I, I'm, I've been an iOS developer, I've been doing Mac development, uh, now I'm like a writing, podcasting, and still doing app development. But let's say I wanted to go into machine learning or something, yeah. I would have to prove myself again, you know? Like I can't just like walk over to, to a machine learning job and say, well, I've got a lot of experience doing iOS development. You should just hire me, right? <laughs> you, I would, I, I would again need to prove like, oh, I've been doing machine learning in my spare time. I've been mm -hmm. doing this and this hobby project. So I think it's always important to have that mindset and to, uh, you know, um, if you're interested in something and if you want to get a job in that field, to to as early as possible to start kind of building up those uh, kind of that kind of resume material, uh, whatever it might be. So some sort of markers you can say at this point, this time, this happened. Some sort of, it went on GitHub or went to the App Store or something, a, a clear milestone you can say, here's a record of my accomplishments over time. Exactly. Yeah, you want something to kind of back up your argument, right? Because, you know, obviously being passionate and being a nice person and, and uh, advocating for yourself and being able to kind of sell yourself, as, it, as, it, as it's called, right? To be able to kind of pitch your skills and to convince someone that you're the right person for the job. Like, that's important too, but that only takes you so far. You also need to be able to back that up with like real tangible things, you know, whether that is projects or courses or whatever it might be. But I think you know, overall, whatever it might be that you're you're trying to do, whether it's iOS development or, or web development or whatever, I think the thing that always speaks the loudest is always real projects, you know? And again, it might it doesn't mean that you create a super hugely successful commercial project. That that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about things that people can see and use and check out, whether that is an open source project whether it's an app on the App Store, whether it's just something you threw together just as a prototype or something, it doesn't really matter. It's just something that they can look at that kind of shows that you know what you're talking about. Right, and it's a chance for folks to prove their chops, not only in, you know, I've read the tutorial, but I've applied what I learned to this thing. And, and I always tell folks, yeah. you know, you can, you can go ahead and build a very fancy app if you want to, but often just showing you've mastered the fundamentals. I know what navigation controllers look like. I know what table view controllers work like. Getting those fundamental UI kit controls looking and working great in an app with tests, with documentation, whatever, it shows you've mastered these fundamentals in practice. You've heard the theory exactly. and applied it. And if you want to go on and do fancy pants 3D effects, you can do. But so much of our job really is get this table view faster and get this navigation thing looking nicer, do this animation better. It's sticking to the basics and really honing and showing those. Exactly. And also, like when, you, when you're talking about like getting a job and going for interviews and things like that, a lot of the tests that a lot of companies will throw at you, you know, whether that is live coding tests or take-home projects or quizzes and stuff like that, like they, they are all kind of based on things that you will memorize and learn kind of as you go and as you do things repeatedly. And, you know, you can have your own opinion about whether that is the right way to hire or not. But the fact is that a lot of companies out there are going to throw some of those challenges at you, especially if you're a beginner and you don't really have, you know, that those years of experience to kind of back things up. Um, like repeatedly doing simpler projects, like, like you say, like implementing table views and doing the fundamentals can really help you really just like solidify that knowledge and solidify uh, the answers to those questions that you might be asked. 
Well, you mentioned memorization, and this is a topic that people ask a lot about because they imagine that senior developers have somehow crammed all of Apple's documentation into our heads. And we've, it's all right, just upload it, just connect the dot, connect the plug, right? Yeah. Half <laughs> my brain is no overview available right now, you know? Um, but yeah, right. <laughs> but we, they, and that isn't true, surely. We, we memorize some things, memorize techniques or some algorithms perhaps, but it's just too big to memorize all of it or even vast swathes of it. That's that's correct, yeah. And I think like when we're talking about memorization, I'm not so much talking about like remember exactly like be able to type out all of UI table view or all of Swift UI like you know letter by letter all of the APIs. That's not really what I'm talking about here. And I don't think that's typically what companies look for either. They're more looking for like you know the the practices you know mm -hmm. the the conventions like when someone asks you can you implement a a table view with a delegate and a data source you kind of know what that means you know or can you build this particular view or use uh, mvvm or whatever pattern you know they might be looking for those are the kind of skills and the kind of memorization uh, I'm referring to here, and I think that's the that's the important thing to practice. Not necessarily like knowing all of strings, all APIs, like by heart. <laughs> That'd be so hard to do. If I remember, yeah. I, remember seeing, <laughs> I, I don't uh, think I don't think I could do that. So <laughs> no, I remember seeing um, I think Javier Soto saying that um, uh, when he does interviews, he does string based interviews, and folks will often solve them in Python rather than Swift. Because when you're when you're nervous already, you know you're sitting there, you want to get this job, you've practiced very hard for it, you're a bit jittery, you know. And then they say, "Hey, do this strings thing." You're like, "Oh, okay, Python." <laughs> oh, no. Something that is, is easier to get to sort of guess your way through sometimes. And it's certainly the case that right. in code we have lots of ways of reusing code. We can think about protocols or generics, or whatever. And they've got these ideas for reusing code, and we also have these ideas, ways of reusing ideas, and we call them design patterns. We'd say, hey, I want to use the template pattern here, or I want to use uh, protocols or delegation, like you said, and everyone goes, aha, yeah, I know what that means, and we can then apply that specifically to here. So you know the concepts, we don't necessarily know the exact details, so that makes more sense.